Infectious bronchitis disease was first reported in early 1930s. Since then, it is documented in all countries with an intensive poultry industry. Infectious bronchitis is thought to be endemic at the majority of poultry sites. In broiler flocks, morbidity is virtually 100%, whereas mortality is usually low. Early reports describe mortalities of 20 to 30%, and these were almost certainly due to mixed infections with other infectious agents such as E. coli or mycoplasma. The QX strain of the infectious bronchitis virus originates from China and is commonly found in Malaysia. Infectious bronchitis is a highly acute disease of major economic importance in commercial chicken flocks throughout the world. The IB virus enters the respiratory tract via aerosol and starts to replicate. From this site, the virus may colonize more internal organs such as the kidneys and the reproductive tract. The initial and principal site of viral replication is in the epithelial cells of the upper respiratory tract. The virus attaches and starts replication on ciliated epithelial cells. Replication of the virus in the respiratory tract will result in the loss of ciliary activity, necrosis and desquamation, causing respiratory distress. Infectious bronchitis is mainly characterized by respiratory signs. Nephropathogenic strains can induce interstitial nephritis with high mortality in broilers. Decreased egg production and poor shell quality are also seen in breeders and layers. In layers, egg production may drop by as much as 70% with poor egg shell quality. In broiler chicks of between 2 and 6 weeks of age, the main clinical signs seen are difficulty in breathing, tracheal rails, coughing and sneezing with or without nasal discharge. A generalized weakness is observed, accompanied by depression. Feed consumption and body weight are markedly reduced. Secondary infections due to E. coli often follow, thereby accentuating the respiratory signs. On necropsy, the trachea is hyperemic or congested with excessive amount of mucus. Serous, catheter, or caseous exudates is seen in the trachea, nasal passages, and sinuses. Caseous plaque may also be found in the trachea. In layer flocks, the decline in egg production is also associated with eggs of smaller size and inferior shell. The egg is seen as soft, pale-shelled and misshapen with thin albumin. Birds infected with QX strain frequently show either cystic oviduct with watery contents or partially atrophic oviduct with large cystic dilation. Degeneration of the ovary and swollen oviducts is also observed. The nephritic form of IB will show swollen kidneys that may be pale or marbled with distended tubules and ureters containing urate crystal. One of the methods to detect IBV antigen is virus isolation. It is usually done in a 9 to 10 day old embryonated specific pathogen free or commonly known as SPF eggs. 3 to 5 passages may be necessary before causing gross embryo pathology typical of IBV. Typical lesions in embryos occurring at about 5 to 7 days post inoculation is curling and dwarfing of the embryo. After virus is isolated, genome can be detected via RT PCR with specific primers. Prevention can be done by vaccination. Vaccination against IB is routinely used in order to protect flocks and avoid economic losses. Both live and inactivated vaccines are used in IB immunization. Live vaccine can be given by eye drop, spray, or drinking water. Prior to spraying, it is best to turn off the ventilation to avoid turbulence of the air. Once vaccination is completed, switch the ventilation back on immediately. It will not affect the uptake of vaccine. For drinking water, the first step is to remove all sanitizers as well as acidifiers from the water system. Lines should be flushed to remove contaminants that can destroy a live vaccine. Withdraw water from the birds for 1-2 to two hours prior to vaccination to induce thirst. This can be done by raising the drinker lines or dimming the lights to ensure that no birds drink until the lines have been primed with vaccine solution from the front to the far end of the poultry house. After each flock, it is important to clean the house by removing the dusts and dirts off the floor, ceilings, light fixture, walls, fans, and air inlets. Disinfect the house 
Once the building and the equipment have been thoroughly cleaned, disinfectants can be applied by sprays, aerosols or fumigations.